Hey gang, Shane Patrick White here and welcome to Beyond the Process. Today I'm taking on the impossible task of climate change. How do I do that? Apparently by trying out a new brush for inking. That's right, I'm tackling a huge Jack Kirby Fantastic Four page and reviewing a new brush by Winsor & Newton. For those of you who voted on which Jack Kirby image to ink in our YouTube community section, this one's for you. So if you'd like to see me try to do two things at once and possibly fail at both, sit back, relax, and enjoy the process. Jack Kirby in Stan Lee's Fantastic Four is a major icon of Marvel Comics. This image is from 1978 well after their very strong collaboration of the early 60s. This page is pretty typical of how tight Jack would pencil. But because I want this to turn out well, I need to go in and tighten up some of the lines and shapes for clarity. No matter how much of a genius the artist is, sometimes this is part of the job. Deadlines loom and people need an assist every so often. If it makes for a better end product, then by all means, do it. Today's a bit different. I'm switching my natural sable brush out with a synthetic Winsor & Newton No. 3 round watercolor brush. When compared side by side with a Winsor & Newton Series 7 No. 3 brush, you can already see the length of the hairs are shorter. Now, why did I decide to change things up? When I emailed Winsor & Newton about why their brushes were so poor these days compared to when I started using them decades ago, they said that, quote, Years ago, before climate change has had an impact on the animals the hair comes from, they were durable enough to stand up to acrylic paint and shellac-based inks. My guess is, they're not scientists, and while they may be close to the product, it may be more than climate change that is changing the quality of sable fur. It might be because they're too cute to survive in the wild. It seems like people blame climate change for everything, from the price of bagels to their divorce. But hey, whatever floats your boat. What I do know is that Jack Kirby's work is notable for being bombastic. So to harness that unbridled power, I printed this page out at 13 by 19. The first thing I'm noticing about the brush is that it's hard to create and maintain a point. Because the hair isn't as long as the Series 7 brushes, it doesn't hold the same amount of ink either. There's a popular adage that is thrown around a lot. It goes like this. It's a poor craftsman who blames their tools. However, the better the craftsmen, the more right they have in complaining. Just like with cooking, it's best to use quality ingredients. Because after that, you only have yourself to blame. One of the first things I'd like to establish in this piece is depth. The main way to do that is through line weight. The more I can push the elements in space and create a nice split between viewing planes, the better. The thing is in the extreme foreground, and so naturally he would have thicker details and even thicker outlines.
The Invisible Woman would be the next step down in line weight, but after that, elements get tricky. Mr. Fantastic is reaching from background to middle ground past Johnny Storm, also known as the Human Torch. Mr. Fantastic's outline should be at least two steps down from Sue Storm. But his hand is enlarged, so I have to make a decision here. In this case, I let the detail of Reed Richards' hand dictate how large to go with the outline. The outline should be thicker overall, but then I reduce the line weight in space so it doesn't compete with Johnny Storm's outlines. And let's not forget Doctor Doom in the deep background of this piece. Of all the characters, he will most likely be the smallest in outline and detail. On top of all these things, I also want to understand where the light is coming from. When inking, the thicker lines will be on the shadow side of your subject, while the thinner lines will be on the lighter side of the subject. doesn't mean they all have to be one thickness, but overall they need to express the light direction and intensity convincingly. That's why it is important to work the entire piece as opposed to finishing one area at a time. You have nothing to compare and judge against to create a more balanced piece. You may notice me struggling with some of the line consistencies. The real problem is when it comes to inking faces. That's why I save them for later, when I feel I have a better handle on the brush. Even though Jack's work is simplified and graphic in nature, his faces still have to read the same way everything else reads. Powerful and expressive. Surprisingly, all brush numbers are not the same. They're not universal from manufacturer to manufacturer. This number three is more like a Windsor & Newton Series 7 number two and nowhere near as good. But rather than complaining about it, I will tell you the characteristics that make for a solid inking brush. One characteristic of a good inking brush is that it has longer hairs. This helps when pulling long lines and is very forgiving in doing so. 
Think of the longer hairs like a rudder that helps guide your hand as you drag it along. When inking with a brush, being able to maintain control relies on this a lot. Normally, I breathe through each long line as I ink. But with these shorter bristles, I have to brace my whole body and hold my breath. Not an ideal situation at all. Luckily in this piece, Jack doesn't have too many long continuous lines. However, he does have a lot of parallel curves. As an inker, one has to recognize what is styled and what is weak drawing. That takes some practice and knowing who you're working with. Sometimes we just don't have the luxury of time, so we have to use our best guess. In the instance of inking Jack, you begin to realize that the superfluous squiggles all add up to make a greater whole. Jack was in command of his style. It was just up to the anchor to trust him. The quicker you can assimilate and get on board with an artist's style, then the next thing is getting on board with their preference. In the past, I've inked only a few artists who wanted very specific things. In one case, they wanted me to correct some elements, but in another, the artist wanted me to ink exactly what was there, just like they would do it. That's no easy feat. My favorite era of the Fantastic Four was the early 60s. The way Jack Kirby drew everyone, especially the Thing, was better in my opinion. Now he just looks like a dude who has a bowler hat for a head, and I can't unsee that. And now you can't unsee it either. You're welcome. The one thing that this synthetic brush, oddly enough, struggles with is inking hair. Especially hair that has curves with lengthy, swooping strokes. As it is, with most brushes, you need to have a lot of control. But with this one, it's nearly impossible to make it look right. Another thing, female features tend to be delicate, even if they're drawn by Jack Kirby. Finding that right degree of feminine elegance takes a lot of practice, not only as a penciler, but as an inker too. Inking burst effects is another skill to have in your arsenal. Depending on the length of them, you may have better luck by pulling the lines away from the body while turning the page, or pulling them toward you. 
In this case, since they're shorter, I should have been pulling the brush toward me all along. As I've gotten older, my hair is graying on the sides like Mr. Fantastic. Though my skin is stretching more, there is nothing fantastic about me. But I digress. Inking hard surfaces like buildings and tech puts demands on the inker to create clean, evenly thick lines. Sometimes known as a deadline, these can be done with a pen and straight edge or a brush. I prefer the brush in most cases as long as the drafting is solid. Your characters are only as strong as the environments you create for them. Spending time on background inks is what grounds the world and the characters that roam within it. It's about this stage of the inking process where I can see how strong Jack's impressionistic graphic shapes are. The shadows underneath Dr. Doom and the spotting of blacks help give the page gravitas. Legend has it that Jack Kirby never used an eraser. When you're drawing up to four books a month, you tend to have to cut corners. The way Jack did it was to create his own graphic language for comics. By doing so, he could cruise through a book knowing where to put the action scenes versus the quiet scenes and deliver an amazing story in the process. While Jack has been reported to have produced thousands upon thousands of pages of comics, it's worth noting that many older comics had four to six panels at most per page. This might give you an idea of how styles evolve. Style could be a product of necessity to meet demanding deadlines. Style also comes out of a shorthand for how one problem solves image making. Either way, consistency is the goal, no matter what subject you draw. In this day and age, realism is more acceptable in comics, as the bridge to the films have become the so-called house style. They take more time, rely upon tons of reference, and in many cases, the books are less engaging visually compared to how they're written. At least to me, anyway.
With realism, most books look alike and have very little character. In such a visual medium, nothing excites me less than overworked pages. Getting a handle on new tools to find out their strengths and weaknesses is crucial if you want them to perform the actions you're used to. With this brush, it took me several hours to understand how to squeeze out passable results. If you can't get it to work for you, it will affect how much longer it takes to meet your deadlines. That's why finding reliable tools and buying them in batches, as many as you can afford, is worth investing in. Word on the street is the Raphael Kalinske 8404 number two brushes, which are the alternative to the Winsor & Newton Series 7 number two brushes, are becoming even more scarce to find. I wished I had bought more of them when I had the chance. As you know, with every project, I try to avoid mistakes and to avoid using white gouache to correct those mistakes. But in all honesty, I had my hands full taming this horse. So I gave up and threw myself into trying to just get through this demo. So the search continues for a new reliable alternative to my former favorite inking brush. This synthetic was not worth the fight. Even though the icing on the cake is to finish off the number four on the Fantastic Four's uniforms, It was all I could do to not snap the brush in half on camera. Who knows, maybe climate change is the real culprit here. And someone needs to take another crack at synthetics. Regardless, I hope you found this video helpful in your own inking pursuits. Good luck and have fun. Thanks again for joining me today. If you found any value in this, hit the like button. Better yet, subscribe or tell a friend. Until next time, thanks for watching.